Hello everyone, that's you going to the winter 2019-2020 forecast verification from Gazweather. So, on the 1st of December, we released the Gazweather.com winter 2019-2020 forecast. And uh, we predicted that we would have average to slightly below average temperatures. We said probably coming in around half a degree below the 81 to 2010 average, which would, which would bring it in uh, around average of 61 to 19, 19. Uh, We also said sort of average type rainfall. We thought that the early part of winter would probably be very wet. We had a very wet autumn. We expected that to carry on through the earlier part of winter. And then we thought things would probably go a bit drier uh, later. And so uh, a wet first half will be offset, some degree anyway, by a drier second half when we come out around average for precipitation. We expected cold snaps. We didn't expect a particularly cold winter. Uh, we expected cold snaps in all three winter months. And we thought it'd probably be a bit of a teaser winter with uh, cold sort of coming close to the UK, trying to get in, but always being push back again by what was expected to be a rather uh, active Atlantic. But that said, we did think that there would be at least a couple of quite potent cold snaps uh, within. So that was the gasweathers.com winter 2019-2020 forecast. Um, this is how it turned out. So um, this is the reanalysis chart for the winter of 2019-2020. And to be honest, it doesn't get much more zonal uh, than this. It doesn't get much more Atlantic driven with a large area of above average heights covering much of central western, southwestern Europe and a deep area of below average heights, low pressure to the north and northwest in the northern Atlantic. And it left us bring up um, a very mild west southwesterly wind and it also uh, meant a very unsettled winter as well. We did actually go a little bit drier through January. We had that very unsettled, very wet December. Then things went a bit dry in January. Then the rain came back again uh, as we went through to February. So we did finish up with a very, very wet winter. That's about as Atlantic driven uh, a winter as it's possible to get, really. So this is how the uh, UK's temperature anomaly uh, came out for the winter of 2019-2020. This is from the UK Met Office, of course. Uh, so this is it, um, and it was an exceptionally mild winter for most parts of the country. All areas had above average temperatures set against 81 to 2010. Northern Ireland were just like half a degree or so above average, not particularly, uh, not particularly excessively mild there. But it gets warmer the further south and east you go. So Scotland up to around a, a degree to a degree and a half. Um, uh, above average, or one and a half degrees above average. Uh, England, uh, many parts of England, up to like uh, one and a half degrees, two degrees above average. And then through the East Midlands and East Anglia, we see that we actually go to two degrees above the 81 to 2010 average. The 81 to 2010 average is what we set our forecast to, but I can show you 61 to 90, 90 as well. And then you see virtually the whole of England and Wales goes over two degrees above average. And even Scotland is like one and a half to two degrees above average. Northern Ireland goes to one to one and a half degrees above average, so again, it's 61 to 90, 90. But 81 to 2010 is what we, is the average that we set our forecast to. So, obviously, from a temperature perspective, the, uh, the gasworthers.com at winter 2019-2020 forecast was a bust. It was completely wrong. Uh, we said average to slightly below, and we came out uh, very mild, well above average, exceptionally so, uh, really, for most parts of the country. So, from a temperature perspective, the, uh, the winter forecast was terrible. And it was also pretty bad from a precipitation uh, point of view as well. This is the 81 to 2010 uh, average, um, or this is the winter 20, uh, 19, 2020 uh, winter rainfall uh, anomaly set against 81 to 2010. Again, see it's a very, very wet winter in most parts of the country. Interestingly, eastern Scotland and the far northeast England did come out a little bit drier 
than ours. That tells you how westerly this winter was because it's these areas that are sheltered, of course, by the Pennines and by the Scottish Mountains. They're sheltered from the rain band several weeks. So they're slightly dry on average, but most places actually had a very wet winter. Uh, many places, sort of 130% of average. Some areas, southern Scotland, for example, a few parts of southern England, parts of South Wales, uh, up to 170% of their average rainfall. Uh, and if we look at this on a month-by-month -month basis, so let's go back to temperature and see how temperatures performed uh, through the season. So we shall look at, uh, let's look at December first of all, and we need to get 2019 up. So that's how December 2019's temperatures look above average. Not excessively so for uh, most places. We're like um, around a degree above average, but it was uh, a milder than average month. But then as we go through to January, you'll see that it, it gets much milder then in January. So the uh, anomaly to average is increased in January with most places around one and a half to two degrees above average of that goes on to February as well. Not quite so much for Scotland and Northern Ireland in February, but England and Wales had another very, very mild month in February. And precipitation-wise, on a month-by-month -month basis, uh, so we see that December, there it is, December 2019, uh, looks like that. So, uh, again, we see southwest of Scotland, much of um, southern, southeastern England, significantly wetter than average, near a normal three of its central sway, bit dry than average across East Scotland, North Eastern England. Uh, and then we go through to January, which actually isn't as wet. So January is a relatively dry month on this eastern and northeastern side of the country. Also, Northern Ireland, interestingly, dry than average. Western Scotland is wetter than average elsewhere near normal. <coughs> Excuse me. And then move through to February, and look at February, exceptionally wet month in February, actually. Uh, the wettest February on record, just very, very excessive rainfall, with many places having 200% uh, of their average rainfall. So our forecast suggested that the early part of winter would be wetter, and then the second half of winter would be drier. That was completely wrong as well. Um, so overall, of course, the Gaz.com winter 2019 2020 forecast was a bust. It all went wrong. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong, basically. And um, there we go. So uh, really sorry about that. Of course, when we produce these forecasts, we are hoping for the best, but we are pushing the boundaries. We're pushing the envelope of a um, uh, uh, forecasting, uh, really. And uh, they, the forecasts are going to go wrong. Any forecast beyond five, seven days is fraught with uh, health warnings, comes with a big truckload of salt and um, just for fun, basically. So uh, we always add in the caveat that this forecast can and uh, may well go wrong. And uh, we hope they, but they won't when we produce them, but we always have a caveat that they could do. And uh, this one bust very, very spectacularly. We did, rather annoyingly, I did um, sort of see the danger signs for this winter when I release a forecast on the 1st of uh, December. So really there were there were f um, three warning signs of this winter. There was the fact that, w that we was uh, at Enso Neutral, but on the warm side of Enso Neutral. And we saw through our reanalysis charts that that often leads to a relatively mild uh, winter. We also have the fact that the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean had, again, and it's been an ongoing um, thing for the past few years, uh, really, but it, it was warmer than average in the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean. That's something that we have, for example, during winter of 2013-14. And then in the North Atlantic, the, uh, the anomalies weren't right there either for a cold winter, really. We had um, almost like a horseshoe shape of cold coming back. Uh, and, of course, this has all uh, got colder and colder just here. The sea surface temperature is there. got colder and colder as the winter has gone on. So when it's cold up here and then it's cooler around there, but it's warmer through here, that's like a reverse tripole of cold, warm, cold. Remember, for a negative NAO, we're looking for warm, uh, cold, cold, and then warm. 
Uh, that's the classic tripod signature. But what we actually had for this winter uh, was uh, cold there uh, and a little bit there, and then warmer through here. And that just isn't right uh, at all. That's not right for a uh, negative NAO uh, at all, really. So the warning signs were there, but I thought some of the other things that we looked at might offset uh, the oceans um, to some degree. I was particularly uh, sort of reeled in a little bit by the November, the wet November and wet autumn data that we finished winter updates of with because that appeared to have a very strong signal both for November rain for wet Novembers and wet autumns to be followed by rather colder winters and that's the one thing that sort of otherwise I would probably have gone for a rather mild winter I wouldn't have gone for a, an exceptionally wet winter I wouldn't have gone for an exceptionally mild winter and I always say that it is very rare that we can pick up on extremes so what we're really looking for when we do these long range forecasts is to get the trend right to be able to say that we've picked up on the correct trend be it milder or colder than average and wetter or drier we're looking to get the trend of the winter right but when we get very extreme seasons and this has been extreme winter not from coal but it's been extreme winter from uh from mild temperatures and also from rainfall and from zonality and from westerlies and from a positive arctic oscillation all of that side of it has been extreme this winter and we wouldn't have been able to pick up on that really in the forecast but um if it hadn't been for the november uh, and autumn, the wet November and wet autumn um, data, I would probably, due to what the oceans were doing, I would probably have gone for uh, sort of a little bit milder than average and a rather wet winter, rather Atlantic driven, but I wouldn't have gone for the extreme um, sort of e extremity of, of the pattern that we've had this winter in terms of the westerlies. Um, but there we go, we live and learn. So this winter has proven that the oceans are king. The oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic, and also potentially the Indian Ocean as well, which is something I'm going to look at a little bit more in uh, the next few months. We may start incorporating the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Indian Ocean as well in our winter updates. I'll see about that. We have a lot of information winter updates already. I don't want to overload everybody with data, but it's possible we will start looking at the Indian Ocean. Uh, sea surface temperature anomalies uh, as well, and you know, should be just there, of course. That's possibly going to be a factor in the uh, next season of winter updates. Uh, but the oceans are king, particularly the Pacific, also the Atlantic. And uh, at least I sort of did give that caveat. But if the forecast goes wrong, it will be because of the oceans. And I do think that's what's gone wrong, um, or that is partly anyway what went wrong. Uh, with this forecast. But anyway, there we go. That's uh, that's the verification of the gasweather.com winter 2019-2020 forecast. It was a bust. It all went wrong. And i um, just very, very sorry about that. There's nothing I can do about it. We issued the forecast in good faith. And um, we, uh, we saw the forecast bust. And there we go. So at least we verify our forecasts when we issue them. I think we're the only uh, channel, the only forecasters that do this. I don't think anybody else goes back after the event and verifies their forecast. But I've always thought it's very important when we issue these forecasts to sort of verify what happened. And if they go right, say, yes, this went right. But if they go wrong, to also say, well, yes, it went wrong. I'm very sorry about that. So there we go. That closes the door on winter 2019-2020. Well and truly shut. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll be a few years before we have a winter quite as uh, atrocious as this one from a rainfall perspective. And hopefully next winter, if nothing else, will be a bit drier and we won't see those awful floods that a lot of places have had this winter. Uh, of course, we released a spring forecast um, a couple of weeks ago. We'll verify that uh, as we get to the beginning of uh, June. And we're already well on our way into the summer updates as well. So the long-range bandwagon never stops at Gasworth. It's, we keep going. And uh, whether forecasts go right or wrong, um, at least you know that you're going to get an honest 
uh, appraisal of uh, what happened. And we're going to give you an honest view. We're not going to try and um, sort of uh, sugarcoat anything or uh, try and shy away from the fact that our forecasts have gone wrong. So you know with Gareth uh you're going to get an honest appraisal. I think this has been a pretty, <laughs> pretty honest appraisal of what uh, happened with winter of 2019, 2020 against what we forecast. Right, uh, that's it for now, though. Uh, so, door well and truly shut on winter 2019-2020, and we're on now with the uh, rest of the um, summer update spring forecast was released a couple of weeks ago. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.